The J is taking many dimensions. The coup leaders have closed their country's airspace after rejecting an ultimatum from the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, to reinstate the post-president Mohamed Bazoum or risk military intervention. The move came as tens of thousands of coup supporters gathered at the stadium in the capital, Miami, to cheer the generals who seized power. Meanwhile, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has met with governors of states that share boundaries with the Nigeria Republic. The states represented at the meeting are Sokoto, Kebi, Jobi, Kastina, and Jigawa. Let's share some updates on the situation with you. Uncertainty looms over a country of about 25 million people. Niger's junta refused to meet with Emis sent by ECOWAS and Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu. There are indications the junta has sought the help from Russia's Wagner Group in anticipation of the use of force by ECOWAS following the end of a seven-day ultimatum to restore the democratically elected government. Efforts to engage with all relevant stakeholders Dialogue and negotiations should be at the forefront of our Sanctions by the regional bloc have seen costs to power supply from Nigeria to the landlocked country, among other penalties. But the junta is stuck to its guns. The Alumni Association of Nigeria's National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies calls for increased dialogue with the junta to resolve the impasse. In a statement, the association, which is an offshoot of one of the country's highest policy think tanks, urges ECOWAS against the use of force. The group says, quote, military action by ECOWAS may escalate the current situation in the humanitarian crisis and worsen the security challenges in the West African sub-region. It may also escalate the tensions in the fragile security situation in the Lake Chad region and other parts of West Africa, attracting other armed groups and external actors to take advantage of it, end of quote. For now, it's unclear what ECOWAS' next line of action would be. Jay, I think looking at the pulse of the nation and what the Northern Senator said this weekend, and Nigerians particularly, I think Nigerians are against the invasion of the Nigerian Republic. Intervention. Military action by the economic community of West African states. What I hear them saying is that, look, we have enough problem in our hands. Let's just face our problem and leave this big brother role and just face what we are going through. Yes, we have <coughs> enough problems. Um, and you know, the, the problem is when you talk about ECOWAS, it is Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it's best to take everything, the bigger body. So at the end of the day, we we'll spend the money. country will spend much more and on defense mm. than in previous years because going to war is not easy. Mm. Even fighting Boko Haram is not easy. It's extremely it's expensive. It's extremely expensive. We are still, the war is still on. So uh, Since for me, there's no point um, going, going, going uh, to war. I can understand that the heads of governments uh, on the, on the sub-region do not want this to get to them. Because it's looking like um, another version of uh, the Arab Spring. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a tsunami. Between, between 2020 and now, six countries. Mm. Uh, the sub-region. Seen um, military rule, you know, a new military leader. So I still believe that the asphyxiation of uh, that uh, junta can happen if the sanctions are continued, because they are already com complaining about the sanctions, if um, we feel the heat. tighten the news, it's still possible to get him. Um, and what I think they should do now is to allow the ECOWAS and SAFIS by allowing the AU to mediate, continue the mediation, and uh, let's see where uh, this leads us. It's understandable that they are worried that their neighbors are suddenly becoming military uh, governments. but. Everything put together, Nigeria has a lot to lose. All of those uh, states, um, so no states, mm. Yobe, Sokoto, Asina, um, Gawasawa, you know, and Kebi, 
six, six states share by border, extensive border with these people. So it is those states that will suffer because the refugees pouring in will create problems for them. Because the refugees and will end up in Lagos. That mm -hmm. can lead to insurgency against Nigeria because those people can come and kidnap our people, you know, mm -hmm. take our people prisoner. What are you going to do about it? You start struggling to have them freed. On the good day, some people will say that yes, we can crush the military. That look is not something that you know that you know if we have the Western backing, we have everybody, France and the United States, they are urging our government and everything. But people are still very skeptical that this is not the time. This is not the time. This is not 1973. When we were we had so much money. Our only problem is how to spend it. Yes. It's 2023. We have, we have no money. We have no money to spend on frivolities. I understand the dynamics. I want to play big brother and that anything happening in the sub-region is our responsibility. But even the almighty American army has been humbled more than once. When they took on battles, they assume will soon be over. Remember that on this program, people posited that the Russian-Ukrainian war will last six weeks. And it's going to two years now. So there is no easy war. There is no win-win in any war. It's only a war that has both cultural and religious implications for a majority of our people. Because this time, is not, I'm not going to look at it as a war against the soldiers. Mm. That's what the soldiers are getting. They are using the, Niger they are using the sub West African threats to get the loyalty of their people. It's giving them validation because other people are trying to attack their country. It's a very simple way of gaining uh, legitimacy when it comes to coups. I don't want Nigeria to play the role where, I don't know the English word for it, call of for the Wafagbo. That when, when the US, they have bases there, France has bases there, and it's us, they have to bear the brunt of the something. Because with their base, with over 10,000 soldiers, and the coup was organized by an army of 12,000 people. They don't need us. They will crush it if they're interested. So while I agree that our big brother image is at stake, the reality in our country today does not warrant that we stretch our luck that far. Because, like you said, almost 22 years or 23 years or 24 years now, of Boko Haram, we've not solved the problem. And that's even internal. Now imagine bringing in external mm. dimension to that. Yes, to some of our northern brothers, they're even looking at this is like fighting your brother. As yes. in, they are so connected. Yes. Some people have relatives and. Uh, they have cousins. Uh, yes, yes. Just yes, across yes. the border. There's no doubt about it that um, this um, is like going to war against your, your brother. And that is not what people want to see. Intermarriage happened. Uh, between these people, when you look at the Ebi um, Sokoto Zamfara, Asina Jiga, Yobi and Bono State, it's about 1,600 kilometers of long border. It, mostly, mostly open. And the uh, <clears throat> Republic has seven states, and the capital Niamey. Five of these states have cultural, and religious, and tribal relationship with Nigeria. Places like Doso. With Kebi State, Tahoa, with Sokoto State, Maradi, Asina, Zinda, with Kano and Jigawa State, and Difa, with Bono State. So when you look at the map of Niger Republic, you will find that 70 to 80 percent of their population lives in the southern part of the country, and that is the part that they have a border, border mm. with yes. Nigeria. So it's going to cause a massive problem when um, ECOWAS goes to war. Because I don't want uh, us to uh, start thinking like it's Nigeria that is going to war. It's an ECOWAS resolution that will lead to war in that place. Ghana, Sierra Leone. Ghana does not want what has happened. Uh, Sierra Leone, Senegal, another African giant, does not want what has happened. So, yeah, but ready. some people are saying that we are crying more than they believe. And the majority of the citizens 
in the Republic, the, the okay. The change. The, 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 there's no way of finding that out because they saw people jubilate. Yes. Here in Nigeria, people get paid to go and jubilate <coughs> about something. And you see people even turning their placards upside, upside down. down. Meaning that they don't even know what they are. What the <laughs> so, uh, you know, that election, the election that Bazoum won, mm. he won narrowly. Mm. This sort of thing could happen in Nigeria. Mm. Especially when an election is uh, very controversial and close. Mm. There are people today. There are people today who don't know their left from their right, who don't even know the dangers in military rule. Whom, if they hear today that military takes power in Nigeria, they will be jubilating. They will think that is their prayers in, in churches that have been answered. Mm. That is the level mm. uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, of, of hatred for the person who has emerged. Beef. You don't like the person who has emerged. You know, there's wish any that, way yeah. that. To throw everything back. away. You know, the number of in 1983, yeah. what happened? A lot of people it was the people who lost election who were shouting and shouting and shouting. You know, and the, at the end of the day, the army exploited our opportunity and they took power. Even at even 1993. So this is the thing. This is what always happens. I'm telling you, and you will see people, they will jubilate. In Nigeria, if it happens, some people will jubilate. But is there, will there be evidence to show that majority of Nigerians want it? I've seen videos of people jubilating in, uh, in uh, Nigeria. Yeah, me. But I know that that election was a close affair. And there are people who are not happy with the outcome. It's the same way that our people are thinking. People who are behaving like maladjusted people, they don't mm. care whether a military comes. So I'm telling you, maybe some people went to beg that military should take over before inauguration. <laughs> so if it happens in our country, that's it. We have to leave it there. GKB, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes we could go on and on. Gide, Gide has all these special <laughs> adjectives. Huh? He has all these <laughs> adjectives for this people. Well, I just... <laughs> he seems to do your research. <laughs> and that's our program today. <laughs> Join us tomorrow for another episode.